that today we've come to this place, Canterbury Cathedral, and I'm with Gladys, who's from the parish, and her ancestor did something very naughty here many years ago. Check it out right here, right now. <laughs> to the channel my name is Dan Beatty this channel is all about inspiring intentional discipleship helping you go deeper in your faith and living out in the world today and it's cold and it's windy and you probably hear blowing we're at Canterbury Cathedral I'm with Gladys who's getting blown away um, it's cold we're gonna get inside because we come on pilgrimage uh, because her ancestor a guy called Reginald Fitzhurst he oh, let's move over here because there's a van coming behind um, was one of the four knights they came down to um, kill, well not kill, kill or arrest the Archbishop of Canterbury at the time. So we're going to go in and find a place and say some prayers. So we're here in the cloisters. Um, Gladys is right by the door that the knights went through when they came to kill Beckett um, or arrest him. Um, so we're going to walk through that door um, and into the chapel where Beckett was praying when he got struck down. Um, here are the cloisters, which are really beautiful, aren't they? It's a real beautiful calming space. Uh, so Beckett was in his chapel, or in a chapel, in the cathedral praying. Um, and we're going to walk up as the knights would have done, which is pretty amazing. As long as the Archbishop of Canterbury is not praying at the moment, he's safe because Gladys' family's got a reputation for killing archbishops. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as the and Archbishop isn't here, we'll be okay. So let's walk through these doors. So we're now in the chapel where Thomas Beckett was killed by the knights. We've just come through this door. This, um, this is where he was praying. Um, Gladys is just sat around the corner. She's praying um, for her ancestors and what happened. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing actually coming through those doors with Gladys, who was a, a descendant of one of the knights, Reginald Fitzhurst. Um, coming through those doors with Thomas somewhere over where probably Gladys is at the moment who's just behind me um, praying and then coming to I don't think they intended to kill him uh, or I think they were intending from well it's different kind of theories but uh, to take him prisoner but he ended up getting killed getting struck down right here um, in this place um, they said it was different they said there was a roof on here but um, it's quite, it's quite a special moment, and, and for Gladys, um, Gladys is 90 now, and um, she said this is really important to come and pray here for what happened so many years ago, especially because it's um, part of her family heritage now, it's something that she didn't know. She came here 50 years ago, 40 years ago, and um, didn't know this at the time. It's uh, her daughter-in-law who researched the family tree and found out that he's part of the family, so a uh, real significant moment, real honour to be here with her. So we're going to have a look around some more of the cathedral and see what else. But uh, let's just go and I'm going to go and spend some time with her and pray. So just speaking to one of the guides and uh, so I know what happened now. So Thomas Beckett was on the other side of the door. Um, through the cloisters was the Archbishop Palace when the knights came and said come. Uh, and he didn't come so they went off into Canterbury and had two or three drinks and got drunk. And it was something called Vespers so he came for prayers. Prayers were... Um, in here it was different at the time, it wasn't so high. Uh, the doorway would have been probably the height and around here would have been the um, a pillar right where that gentleman's just standing now is where Be Beckett fell. The knights came um, through that door. Well, in fact, they heard the knights coming. Um, the monks had closed the door and he said, no, not going to close the door. This is a church, we don't close the door. And they came in and they said to Beckett, um, uh, your traitor and he said basically no nope, I'm a man of God uh, that infuriated them and they struck the blow so Gladys's ancestor struck the first blow and they struck the blow so much um, when they killed him the brains came out uh, and the, one of the sword breaks so I believe um, and they took then his body through over there down to the crypt which where we're going to go now so they carried him from here going over there down to the crypt um, and now glad he's sitting there um, praying it's really um, amazing scene um, how um, she's living it out as well as it were um, realising where her ancestor was and this becomes something that's uh, an amazing link for her um, but this place would have been very different and 
so it wouldn't have been high and, and um, they were clinging to the pillow where he was put down by the pillar so uh, let's go down to the crypt where they kept his body so um, even though I don't like um, graffiti I think um, there's graffiti here from uh, 1668 um, there's uh, one I just saw 1720 down here 1794 not that you should do graffiti now for the future but when it's like this when it's so old it's, it becomes part of history and pretty interesting uh, that these people stood here and put um, their initials um, looks like IB 1668 um, because you can see where they put it and even put your fingers there it's pretty cool so we're going to go down to the crypt now so we've just been down to the crypt um, where you can film all. so <laughs> with my colour on I respected that um, Gladys is having a rest down there so I'm having a quick walk around in recce to see where we can go unfortunately there's a whole load of steps um, you can see um, coming up to the place where see the candle just there um, that's where as this thing says uh, St Thomas's shrine stood from 1220 to 1538 so he was downstairs and they moved him upstairs um, built this big shrine loads of people could, uh, bought loads of stuff lots of riches on it um, and when King Henry got rid of it loads of money went to him because um, he used this thing that if you are a traitor all the money uh, goes to um, the king so he got loads of money the windows over there um, say and these weren't so destroyed or the the, um, the kind of a record and sort of stained glass windows are useful sometimes there's a record of all the miracles that Thomas uh, did with people so there's all these miracles that people would have come here on pilgrimage to come to this tomb again marked by that um, candle and they would have um, just uh, uh, prayed for miracles and healing and that's why he became a saint because he's prayed for miracles and healing um, uh, because he would have healed people so up here um, around would have been it gets a bit darker here so all these uh, tombs probably would have been original of people wanting to get uh, as close to the shrine as possible and probably or maybe later and not um, destroyed I can only imagine maybe later because they might have been destroyed as well but they were getting rid of saints not getting rid of um, what do you call it they weren't getting rid of uh, these tombs here don't know stuff to find out that's quite spectacular behind um, but you can see why they moved the tomb out here because um, going all the way down the cathedral that's right at the end, at the end down there um, and you've got the choir down there quite a stalls in the tomb would have been uh, here been massive um, well place of um, prayer uh, for this saint not that we prayed saints now um, and such stuff given apparently the King of France was one of, I think it was King of France give it a large diamond uh, or ruby uh, which was then seen on uh, King Henry VIII's finger and painted by Holborn or someone like that so you can see it's a massive area as well so the tomb would have been huge um, and the stones was, look, this is my archaeological bit in now if they got rid of the stones no because the stones are slightly different around the edge and then they're, they're different where the tomb would have been so it's huge actually I'll mark it out with my finger so down there across and uh, got to get a perspective kind of going up there so it's a huge area for a tomb um, you can always tell from the archaeological point of view when they um, change um, things like stones and stuff like that so um, I want to find the Black Prince tomb now so I'm going to go off and find that there's loads of stuff here and um, before I just walk around the corner and the tomb's behind or well, what was the tomb and this is uh, King Henry VIII and Joan of Navarre um, steps so people coming up this is pretty spectacular um, tomb so it's King Henry and his wife Joan and it's like a bed that they're both laid in and then something here don't know what that is let's go to the other side 
So you've got kings buried, King Henry IV, here. Um, Black Prince is associated with Prince of Lisbeth, where I came from. Um, he was from that area and he kept the stables uh, right next to our church. So he would have been uh, around uh, there. I wonder if that's him over there. Um, I'll have to go around there and have a look. So I uh, was right, um, Black Prince. Um, he was um, 46 when he died. Um, and this is his grave, which is very cool because he he walked the same place I did in Risborough. Um, and then, so this was confirmed to me what I was saying before, they did keep them here because of who they are. This was an Archbishop, William Courtney, Archbishop of Canterbury, 1381 to 1396. Um, so they would have surrounded uh, the tomb of Thomas Beckett, which you can see is so important because um, he had these really important people put around him. So uh, I'll sign off with Black Prince. So we're back down uh, and in a bit more light. Behind me is the choir. If you ever heard uh, the choir for Canterbury or any, any of the choirs in the big cathedrals, they're pretty spectacular. Up there is the um, where the shrine was. That's where they would do communion. Um, and actually it's quite cool because you can walk around this bit. It's really quiet today, I thought it'd be a lot busier. Um, and then on Psalm 119 on the Bible here, which you can't touch. They use the same books that we do at our church. Um, so this is choir stools here. Um, and it's kind of, this is all, um, I think I see this on TV when the Archbishop was in stools. Um, you've got a huge part of the cathedral up here and then you've got another huge part through there but it's all blocked off by this very narrow uh, bit here and a doorway so as you can see it goes huge here and then you come this side and then it's huge here as well but it's all separated and on this side on one side it's wood on this side it's probably previous archbishops so um, if we come here now then just over here is the bit where Thomas Beckett uh, was and that's that bit just there is where he fell um, quite down there now and you've got these spectacular windows behind um, just trying to work out what that was but it looks like they're going to have some not scaffolding it looks like they're going to have some kind of concert um, and then the shop's down here he's below he's Gladys waiting for me so I'll, I'll go collect her and uh and I'll see you in a bit. Sorry, I'm not even looking at the camera because I keep looking around everywhere. So we're just uh, back at the start where we come in and I'm with Gladys. How was today, Gladys? Wonderful, absolutely breathtaking. Uh, so close to God and I feel lifted and freed for my family. It's, it's amazing. We. Um, we went back down to the martyrdom and we prayed there. We did. Um, we've been around the cathedral. The cathedral's amazing, it's got so much stuff here. And we're actually stood right now in the oldest part. So I think they said back in 1993 they dug up this floor and St. Augustine, who was the first Archbishop of Canterbury, had his church here and was stood in the, like, the first... Christianity. Yeah, first Christian church in the... Um, in England, the first is actually the first actual Church of England That's right. that we're stood in. Now we've got over 16,000 churches, and we're stood at exactly where the, the first one was um, all those years ago. And um, um, when he came, when Augustine came here and to Christianise the land sent by Rome, so it's a real special place. This cathedral is is stunning, and there's so much um, to see. We come to see one thing, and I think we achieved that thing. We've achieved it's and it's been a real blessing. blessing. Yeah. And uh, the sin's been lifted. Yeah. So Gladys is uh, a stand today, which is great. Um, so um, 
I keep looking around this place because there's so much there, um, so much around. Just to point out um, up here, that window pane right there is one of the oldest pieces of glass, a uh, uh, stained glass window in England or the UK. Um, there's so much here um, that you could probably spend a, a real long time going through. Um, and there's cloisters out there and there's, and there's so much. But we came down uh, to be with Gladys here to pray um, for uh, what happened and for her and her family. And that's been achieved. And now we're going to go back uh, home. So thank you for watching, uh, coming on this very special journey. And I will see you next time. Bye.